At the heart of this tragic story were three people, John Reynolds, a former Marine and devoted husband, Emily Reynolds, his loving but often lonely wife, and Father Mark, a charming and mysterious priest. Their once normal lives became tangled in lies and tragedy, haunting the peaceful town of Meadowbrook forever. John and Emily Reynolds looked like the perfect couple. Married for over 10 years, they had built a life full of stability and respect. John, a decorated ex-Marine, was admired for his discipline and honesty. Emily, a stay-at-home mom, was loved for her kindness and active role in community activities. Their seemingly happy marriage was a cornerstone of their social circle. Yet beneath this idyllic surface, Emily was often lonely. John's new job kept him away from home for long hours. As a security consultant for a high-profile firm, John traveled frequently, leaving Emily alone to manage the household and their two children. His work, while prestigious, demanded nearly all of his time and energy. Emily's days were filled with longing, her evenings empty without John's presence. She busied herself with community events and church activities, but the void in her heart grew with each passing day. Father Mark, the new priest at St. Mary's Church, was a magnetic figure. His sermons were impassioned, drawing more parishioners each Sunday. He seemed to understand the struggles and secrets of those who confided in him, offering solace and guidance. Emily found herself increasingly drawn to his charismatic presence, seeking comfort in his words and company. She volunteered more at the church, hoping to fill the emptiness left by John's absence. As John's absences grew longer, Emily's bond with Father Mark deepened. She found in him a confidant, someone who listened without judgment. Their conversations grew more personal, more intense. Father Mark, behind his benevolent facade, harbored his own secrets and ambitions. He saw Emily's vulnerability and seized the opportunity to draw her closer. The scandal began with whispers, as all scandals do. Meadowbrook was a small town, and secrets were hard to keep. John, oblivious to the growing closeness between his wife and the priest, focused on his demanding job. He was proud of his work, providing security strategies for influential clients, ensuring their safety in a world full of unseen threats. Yet, he remained unaware of the greatest threat brewing in his own home. Father Mark arrived in Meadowbrook as the new parish priest, quickly becoming a beloved figure. His sermons were passionate, his counsel wise, and his presence comforting. He had a unique ability to connect with his parishioners, offering guidance and solace in times of need. Emily, deeply spiritual and actively involved in the church, found herself drawn to Father Mark's charisma and warmth. The affair between Emily and Father Mark began innocuously. Emily, struggling with feelings of loneliness due to John's frequent absences for work and community service, sought solace in the church. Father Mark, always approachable, became her confidant. Their conversations, initially centered around faith and personal struggles, gradually grew more personal. Emily felt a connection with the priest that she had never felt with anyone else, a sense of being truly understood and valued. Father Mark was completely captivated by Emily's honesty and vulnerability. He found himself drawn to her, not just as a parishioner, but as a woman. Their meetings became more frequent and more private, held in the quiet, hidden corners of the church. The lines between their roles began to blur, and an unspoken tension simmered between them. The forbidden nature of a priest falling for a married woman added a thrilling danger 
to every stolen glance and quiet conversation. As their relationship grew, they began to meet outside the church, pretending it was for spiritual guidance. Emily and Father Mark would take long walks in the countryside, their conversations filled with laughter and shared secrets. Their emotional connection quickly turned physical, their hands brushing against each other, lingering touches sparking intense desire. They found themselves in a passionate affair, their bodies pressed together in the shadows, hearts racing with the thrill of forbidden love. Each secret meeting was charged with the excitement of what they were doing, crossing sacred lines and giving in to the powerful pull between them. The weight of their secret was heavy. The knowledge of their affair, a constant reminder of the boundaries they were breaking. Every touch, every whisper, every moment alone was filled with the taboo of their relationship, making their forbidden love even more intoxicating. The affair between Emily and Father Mark grew increasingly intense, consuming their thoughts and actions. They became reckless, meeting in riskier locations and leaving behind subtle clues that hinted at their indiscretion. Emily's behavior began to change noticeably. She became more distant and evasive with John. Her once steady demeanor now marked by restlessness and distraction. Father Mark, too, was affected. His sermons took on a more fervent tone, reflecting the turmoil within him. He struggled with his vows and the guilt of his actions, yet he was unable to sever his connection with Emily. The affair provided a sense of excitement and fulfillment that he had never experienced before. John, initially oblivious to the affair, started noticing the changes in Emily. Her late nights at the church, the secretive phone calls, and her sudden coldness towards him all pointed to something amiss. His suspicions grew, and he began to piece together the evidence of Emily's betrayal. His world, once stable and predictable, began to unravel. The community, too, started whispering. Meadowbrook was a small town where everyone knew each other's business, and the subtle changes in Emily and Father Mark did not go unnoticed. Gossip spread like wildfire, and the scandalous nature of their relationship became the subject of hushed conversations and speculative glances. As the affair continued, a darker truth emerged. Father Mark had a history of similar indiscretions. It came to light that Emily was not the only woman he had seduced under the guise of spiritual guidance. Several other women, once drawn to his charm and charisma, came forward with their own stories of secret meetings and illicit affairs. The revelation of Father Mark's multiple affairs cast a sinister light on his relationship with Emily. The priest, once seen as a pillar of the community, was now viewed with suspicion and contempt. The growing danger and desperation in Father Mark's actions became apparent as he sought to maintain his secrets at any cost. Father Mark was desperate to keep his secrets, so he did something terrible. David, a regular churchgoer, caught Father Mark and Emily kissing in the confessional booth. David threatened to tell everyone unless Father Mark confessed. Terrified of ruining his perfect image, Father Mark came up with a dark plan. He tricked David into going to the church's bell tower to talk. It was a dark, quiet night, just right for what Father Mark had in mind. The tower was high and out of the way. As they stood by the edge, David grew more insistent, his voice rising with emotion. David didn't see Father Mark nudging him closer to the edge. In one swift, brutal motion, Father Mark pushed him. 
David's eyes popped wide open as he lost balance, his arms flailing for something to grab. But there was nothing. He screamed as he fell, the sound cutting through the quiet night. It seemed like forever before he hit the ground. The horrible thud of David's body echoed in the night. Blood spread around him, his body bent in weird ways. Father Mark looked down from the tower, his heart racing. Seeing David dead was horrifying, but also a relief. His secret was safe. He quickly went down the tower and made sure no one saw what happened. Confident he was alone, he dragged David's body to a hidden spot in the church's basement. He hid the body under old church stuff nobody used. His hands shook, but he tried to act normal, pretending nothing happened. Father Mark kept doing masses, calm and collected. People noticed David was missing, but without a body, it stayed a mystery. Father Mark comforted his people, acting concerned while he hid his guilt. Time passed, and people stopped asking about David. Father Mark kept up his act, giving hope and advice to everyone. But inside, he was always nervous, scared of every unexpected sound or shadow. He knew the big risk he took, but he felt he had no choice. Emily, unaware of the deadly lengths Father Mark had gone to, continued their affair. She noticed a change in him, a darkness that seemed to hang over him, but he dismissed her concerns with a smile. He tried to convince himself that he could move on, that he could bury his guilt along with David. But the weight of his actions bore down on him, each day a struggle to maintain his facade. The police investigation eventually grew cold. There were no leads, no suspects, nothing to tie Father Mark to the crime. He began to believe he had gotten away with it. He resumed his life, but the memory of that night never left him. It haunted his dreams and tainted his every waking moment. He thought he had silenced David, but the torment of his conscience was relentless. It was then that the moment John had dreaded finally unfolded before his eyes. His life had been built on a foundation of love, trust, and shared dreams with his wife Emily. However, recent times had seen a shadow casting over their relationship as Emily became distant, often lost in her thoughts and frequently away from home. Overcome with suspicion, John resolved to uncover the truth by following Emily one overcast afternoon. His pursuit led him to St. Mary's Church, where he saw her entering the sanctuary. Quietly, he slipped inside and hid behind the altar, his heart pounding with anticipation. From his concealed vantage point, John observed Emily and Father Mark. She seemed different, lively, her face radiating a happiness that John hadn't seen in many months. Father Mark, known for his charismatic and caring nature, stood closer to her than seemed appropriate, touching her arm in a way that ignited a fiery anger in John. This sight confirmed his gravest fears. An affair between his wife and the priest they both trusted. Engulfed by a mix of fury and heartbreak, John couldn't hold back. He burst from his hiding spot behind the altar, startling both Emily and Father Mark. Emily's face turned pale, while Father Mark, usually so composed, appeared briefly unsettled. The confrontation that followed was fierce and charged with emotion. John's voice, heavy with betrayal, echoed through the church as he accused them, each word heavy with the pain of betrayal. How could you do this to me? He yelled, voice breaking with every word. To us, to our family. Emily, completely taken aback and struggling for words, stammered, tears beginning to form in her eyes. John, it's not what you think, she tried to explain, but guilt weighed her words down. Father Mark intervened 
trying to calm the escalating situation with his hands raised in a gesture of peace. John, please, listen. This wasn't supposed to happen. It's more complicated than you think, he pleaded, his voice desperate for John to understand and forgive. But John was consumed by rage, fueled by the betrayal from the two people he had held dearest. Complicated? You've betrayed me. Betrayed everything we stand for, John shouted, his voice seething with anger. His fists clenched, his body shaking with uncontrollable fury. The air was thick with tension, and the situation spiraled into chaos. John, consumed by uncontrollable rage, lunged at Father Mark. The priest, usually peaceful, was forced into a desperate act of self-defense to protect both himself and the dark secret they shared. His frantic eyes scanned the area and found a large, heavy crucifix near the altar. In a moment of sheer instinct, Father Mark grabbed the crucifix. The first swing struck John with a sickening thud, splitting his forehead open and sending blood spraying. John, driven by fury, charged again, but Father Mark, gripped by terror, swung the crucifix with all his might. Each blow was more brutal than the last, bones cracking and flesh tearing. Blood splattered the altar as Father Mark struck again and again, the sound of the blows echoing in the church. The final crushing hit shattered John's skull, leaving him lifeless in a pool of blood, the sacred crucifix dripping with blood. Father Mark's hands shook, covered in John's blood and bits of flesh. The floor was slick with crimson, John's body a broken, bloody mess. His face was almost unrecognizable, caved in from the force of the blows. The priest stood over the lifeless body, panting, surrounded by the gruesome aftermath of his desperate fight for survival. The aftermath was harrowing. Emily, witnessing the shocking spiral into violence, stood frozen, overcome with horror and sorrow. Her life, once brimming with love and future hopes, lay in ruins. She collapsed beside John's body, her cries filling the haunting silence that followed the tragic encounter. Father Mark, staring down at his blood-stained hands and the body of his former friend, felt the full weight of his actions. Panic overwhelmed him, and he fled, leaving behind a scene of chaos and tragedy. His escape was not just from the physical location, but from the crushing guilt and the looming consequences of his actions. The quiet night was shattered by the flashing red and blue lights of police cars racing through the town's narrow streets. Emily Reynolds, distraught and in shock, had called 911, her voice trembling as she reported the horrific scene. Father Mark, covered in John's blood, fled the scene of his crime, his heart pounding with fear and guilt. The small town, once his sanctuary, now felt like a maze of danger and betrayal. As the first light of dawn touched Meadowbrook, the news of John's murder spread fast. So the police started to search every corridor of the church, and what they found shocked them. In a dark corner of the church, police found David's body, horribly twisted from a bad fall. Now they knew there were two fatal victims whose destinies were sealed at the hands of the same man. This gruesome discovery left no doubt. Father Mark, once a respected figure, was now seen as a monster. The police scoured every part of the church for clues, each hidden spot revealing more about the dark secrets it held. And so the manhunt began. All units, we have a suspect on the run. Father Mark is considered armed and dangerous. Approach with caution, came the urgent message over the police radio. Father Mark moved through the back alleys and hidden paths of the town. 
his mind racing for a plan. He knew the police would be closing in soon. His only chance was to reach the dense woods at the edge of town, where he could lose himself and hopefully evade capture. Detective Miller, a seasoned officer with a reputation for her relentless pursuit of justice, coordinated the manhunt. She knew every corner of Meadowbrook and used her knowledge to predict Father Mark's movements. Roadblocks were set up at all major exits and officers combed the streets and surrounding areas. Father Mark's heart pounded as he reached the outskirts of the town. The dense forest loomed ahead, offering a glimmer of hope. He glanced back, seeing the distant flicker of police lights and hearing the faint wail of sirens. With a final burst of energy, he plunged into the woods, his mind a whirlwind of fear and desperation. The forest was thick and confusing, the underbrush tugging at his clothes and slowing his progress. He stumbled over roots and rocks, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Every snap of a twig or rustle of leaves made him jump, fearing the approach of the police. The reality of his actions began to weigh heavily on him, his thoughts a chaotic mix of guilt and self-preservation. Detective Miller was not far behind. She led a team of officers into the forest, their flashlights cutting through the early morning fog. The scent of pine and damp earth filled the air, mingling with the tension of the chase. The forest, usually a place of peace, now felt like a trap closing in on Father Mark. Spread out, he can't have gone far, Miller ordered, her voice steady and determined. She knew they were close. The broken branches and disturbed foliage provided a clear trail. The dogs, trained for tracking, barked and pulled at their leashes, eager to catch their quarry. Father Mark's strength waned as he pushed deeper into the forest. His mind raced with thoughts of escape, regret, and the terrible crime he had committed. He couldn't help but think of Emily, the woman who had unknowingly set these tragic events in motion. The weight of his sins felt unbearable, and he began to consider a final, desperate act to escape justice. Suddenly, the barking of police dogs pierced the air. Panic surged through Father Mark as he realized his time was running out. He broke into a desperate sprint, but exhaustion and fear clouded his judgment. He stumbled into a clearing where he was met with the blinding beams of police flashlights. Freeze! Put your hands where we can see them! Detective Miller's voice rang out, firm and authoritative. Father Mark, panting and defeated, raised his blood-stained hands. He fell to his knees, the weight of his actions crushing him. The officers quickly surrounded him, securing him in handcuffs. As they led him away, he felt the cold metal bite into his wrists, a physical manifestation of his guilt. In a moment of sheer despair, Father Mark made a desperate attempt to take his own life. As the officers were distracted, he lunged towards a jagged rock, trying to end his torment. However, the officers were quick to react, pulling him back and restraining him more tightly. His failed suicide attempt only added to his misery. As the sun fully rose over Meadowbrook, the once serene town now stood witness to the dramatic capture of its fallen priest. Father Mark was led away, his fate sealed by his own dark deeds. The manhunt had ended, but the scars left on the community would linger for years to come. Father Mark was taken into custody, his mind a blur of regret and despair. The trial was swift, the evidence overwhelming. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. As he sat in his cell, the reality of his situation sank in. The iron bars and concrete walls were a constant reminder of his sins and the life he had destroyed. 
In prison, Father Mark faced the torment of his conscience daily. His attempts to seek redemption were met with the cold reality of his actions. The whispers of the other inmates, the isolation and the knowledge of the pain he had caused weighed heavily on him. He had tried to escape justice, but now he would spend the rest of his life facing it head on. The community of Meadowbrook slowly began to heal, but the memory of Father Mark's betrayal and the tragic events that followed remained etched in their minds. The church, once a place of solace, now stood as a reminder of the darkness that had briefly consumed their town. And so, Father Mark served his life sentence, haunted by the ghosts of his past, his failed escape attempt, a constant reminder of his inescapable guilt. Could John have ever imagined the depths of betrayal that awaited him? Was Emily's search for solace destined to end in tragedy? And what of Father Mark, whose dark secrets and desperate actions tore a community apart? How will Meadowbrook heal from such profound devastation? Thank you for joining us in uncovering this harrowing tale. Click here for another true crime story.